Welcome back to Orbitz Consulting. My name is Manaz Zainuddin, Global Education Consultant and Founder of Orbitz Development Code, an approach for conscious learning and being. This podcast highlights education communities from macro and micro angles, leadership, learning, personal and professional growth across multiple disciplines. Education is holistic and as vast and infinite as the cosmos. As we bring stories, interviews, talks, projects from around this globe, I extend Plutarch's famous quote that I had posted in uh, the schools I have worked in. The mind is not a vessel to be filled, but a fire to be kindled. This is the last episode of EduCovid series, the series that I have been sending and updating since the beginning of the pandemic and online learning. I thought to include some content uh, from the series as leaders and school improvement committees prepare for the next academic year in most of the countries around the world. Episodes 8, 11, 12, and 13 present focus urgency areas, accountability, academic achievements and losses, alignment to school, uh, vision and mission, alignment to standards, and inclusion. The areas that school systems had to handle simultaneously as challenges rose and new sets of action had to be taken throughout the past year and a half. The remaining area is that of home cooperation. The pandemic caused school closures and we found ourselves suddenly transitioning to online learning, learning from home. Parents and guardians found themselves facing an unprecedented challenge, which they had to juggle along with the with the health and economic challenges. The pressures that have been increasing due to the uh, new strain of COVID-19 and the fear of children testing positive, which is already happening, along with many people dreading vaccinations, are enough to make all educators and families vulnerable and unable to handle more pressure. Now, this is a point that demands consideration, especially now with the plans for in-person learning and new variants of the virus. There was no guaranteed way for schools and teachers to do all teaching and monitoring and the learners doing all the learning on their own, so parents' role in this process has never been more needed than now. Most, if not all, schools assisted parents and guardians during that transition, and I provided resources too to help my school's network. A significant point to consider is that we cannot expect that all parents have strategies, techniques, and tools to handle concerns. Awareness sessions and continuous guideline plans are very helpful. Most schools around the world have started their summer vacations, so the need for home cooperation is much less than what it was during those teaching days. However, there are some suggestions that can be supportive during this summer and in our preparations for next year. Two researches in 2003 and 2005 by Des Forges and, uh, and Abu Shahar and Goldman state that, and I quote, Involving parents, caregivers in learning has a greater impact on improving student outcomes than socioeconomics, end quote. So the first intervention when it comes to parents is to raise awareness through awareness sessions and guidelines at every possible occasion. Raising awareness about child differences and uniqueness, understanding that each child or adolescent perceives the world in a different way helps remove the resistance to accepting the child and the adolescents and finding ways to handle their feelings and actions. Now, reminding parents that 
attention span differs by age and child's preferences is also very important. Most children have received the report cards. Comparing them to other children they know or average children draws barriers between them and the learning experience as a whole. It is the role of the parents to ensure a stress-free environment as much as possible and this includes not forcing on them extra studying time. Sending surveys in the middle or at the end of each term can provide great feedback for improvement, such as when we ask questions like how effective is the learning, whether it's in person or blended, and we know that most of the schools around the world will be heading towards in-person learning at the beginning of this next academic year. How valid are the assessment processes and procedures? And we also know that there are many changes taking place regarding assessment processes and procedures. Are parents giving their children a chance to articulate their needs? We know that some parents consider that children's opinions are invalid or waste of study time. Have parents noted any kind of disorder in the children's attitudes or behaviors that might be helpful to share with the school? And disorders include anxiety, fears, embarrassment, anger, including home anger, internet addiction, even eating disorders. Emphasizing communication remains to be the most powerful way for maximum reach. So redesigning ways and purposes for communication emphasizes the urgency to keep paths of communication open and honest. And in this way, home cooperation active. Few of what can be suggested, for example, when there are some certain platforms such as Padlet, it can make communication possible and easily accessible and the cooperation more solid. For example, when you use Padlet to send messages of gratitude, appreciation and recognition from school to home and from home to school is a very rewarding method. And there are other platforms that can be used in the same way and for the same purpose. Reminding parents of the assigned office hours gives no excuses of not communicating or cooperating in matters of importance. Reminding parents to have continuous discussions regarding daily tasks can keep all stakeholders on track. Checking social media and the children's activity feeds on a regular basis ensures digital safety of all stakeholders. Inviting parents to volunteer in activities and probably even plan activities and events can be a very good idea when also assisted and guided by the school. For example, PE and art classes, they were the subjects that parents could help with. Physical education is easy to perform and can be done as a family bonding activity. Arts can be done as well with direct or indirect support and supervision by parents. For example, direct supervision when parents and guardians themselves show the ways if they know some techniques or some strategies. Indirect support and supervision, for example, when they show their children videos that incorporate all those strategies and skills. Now, throughout the summer, parents can also compensate the loss in physical education and arts through their free time and vacation mode. So quick strategies for parents or guardians, such as finding a quiet corner in which the children do not get distracted by sounds of daily home chores and or the sounds of parents working from home because we had lots of cases when parents were working from home. Now it is much less this post pandemic era, but it may be still happening in certain homes. Allocating a specific spot, such as a desk in which all materials are available for the child, for example, with the sharpened pencils and art material and all those kits and passwords for the virtual rooms. Now we do not need those skills. Most of the children have already been accustomed to all those procedures and routines. But at that time, during last year, it was really very important to set those certain guidelines because they helped in facilitating those learning periods. Material needed which exceeded stationary. Now, children needed items for sports classes, such as towel for arm exercise, items for an item hunt, such as socks and spoons. I personally, as a mother, loved it when my children would go to the room just to get item for the sports class. It was fun and they liked and we could ensure that they are doing sports classes from home. Older grade levels, for example, needed to have some material prepared for their chemistry classes in case there was a difficulty of having uh, virtual chemistry classes. So those simple experiments could be done hands on. And all these items and facilitations can be provided easily by parents. Assurances to certain children who did not easily welcome change and new routines, which of course we mean by this less surprising situations 
and now with in-person learning most of the schools will be returning to schools next September uh, there will be definitely new routines and that won't be very easy but I think that with time uh, children are getting used to all that assisting in keeping handwriting good and that was a major loss actually mainly in K-2 especially in the absence of teachers when during online learning and students those little children had to speed up with the work so there wasn't much focus on handwriting one of the main responsibilities was to allot five minutes daily to check handwriting in practice books and doing as many adjustments as possible just to keep handwriting neat and legible it does not have to be perfect we all know that we should not put pressures on children fine motor skills differ from child to another advising parents to provide gaming that supports learning mainly board games construction games card games parents can then observe children's cognitive abilities and demands as well as their behavior in the different contexts they can also show their children their own behavior during problem solving giving their children more self-confidence and motivation and this can be done now is summer vacation and there is a great chance for that quality time parents and children with board games parents cooperation in ensuring that their children do not turn their camera off or find ways to sneak out of virtual classes because it happened but in case of hybrid blended learning next year there can be some preparation for that giving children opportunities to try to do things in different ways to meet targets may be needed from time to time we all know that parents are not all educators and they were not trained to be so but asking for advice or the institution providing awareness sessions can facilitate that can make it much easier for parents from a technical level parents can also explore new options for example Chromebooks has this family link which is an option for parents to get approval or denial apps there are lots of themes in the Chrome web store it can help monitor children's screen time and there are lots of other technologies that are developing more and more every month they are adding more opportunities regarding cybersecurity. so throughout last year parents had three main concerns academic achievement anxiety and boredom now boredom due to school closures and lack of regular activities the three concerns are not much less now actually it's true that most learners receive the report cards they are at home for their vacation but we all know that many skills were disrupted even lost as for anxiety the pandemic is not over yet the new demands for children vaccination has imposed and is imposing new challenges on parents especially parents who still do not accept the idea of vaccinations so let us be realistic and handle the issue from all angles this is a source of concern as for boredom now boredom is essential for a child's growth because it can act as a trigger for creativity when a child is not given this toy to play with or sometimes even an idea that's when this child will think how to make one how to create one and i've seen that with my children i think boredom and living in an apartment when there is not much to do outside they found so many creative ways to fill their time and to come out with innovative ideas however we all tend to provide some excitement for our children and most of the children find online games not only entertaining but also thrilling screen time was a constant worry for many parents around the world especially because it was not something that can be simply wiped out of our daily routines it became an important part of our daily routine when we were doing online learning the best thing was to accept it and redirect it for less conflicts and more benefit outdoor play and socialization will always be considered the best ways for children's growth socially and emotionally and they are highly recommended however with parents who still want to incorporate games in their children's routines it is essential that they choose the right ones now many parents are clueless about the content of the games their children and teenagers play and here we have to as schools to draw the attention on these very very critical issues games that include fighting speeding cars anything that fosters high levels of aggressive competition e exhaustion for the eyes are better not given to children and we also know that games that require hubs and chats especially with adults who might also play the game are also very risky these children may be harassed or cyber bullied what are some alternatives during this summer 
Incorporating board games during family board game night or through other occasions is amazingly helpful for speaking out social and emotional concerns and academic challenges. You know, if parents know how to direct the talk in a non-indicative manner so that children do not feel that their parents are forcing something on them or trying to pull out information because children do not like that they just like the spontaneous way of discussion most importantly the fun that accompanies such play sessions is profoundly constructive now giving the adolescents choice without showing them your intentions i mean as spontaneous as it could be to change something in the house such as their room design furniture kitchen yard letting them think about the surrounding that they can control and find ways to make it look better or be more effective it gives them more freedom to improve more presence in their home as decision makers cooking and baking for example gardening if possible any other hand or movement activity at home can instill some type of curiosity in a child to explore and create chess music instruments yoga dancing word and number games such as sudoku hanks man scrabble one of the powerful mind toys are legos they are my children's favorites and they spend hours and hours doing those legos constructions and we all know that it also applies to STEM, so it will be a great benefit for children during summertime. Such activities may not match with the digital wave now, they are indispensable. What is also indispensable are outdoor activities, mainly hiking because it is purely about nature, swimming in natural water, and we mean here a natural water which is less crowded, and we know that natural water is always better than pool water, swimming pools, and other sports such as tennis, biking, basketball, etc. Now, most importantly, Reading is the greatest activity for cognitive nourishment. Engaging children in reading some books that relate to mental health is very helpful at this time in supporting schools' plans for well-being. There are lots of books in different languages. I'll just mention two here. Dan Santet's book, After the Fall, it's a tale about facing fears that pictures Humpty Dumpty that we all know. Another one is New Kid by award-winning author illustrator Jerry Craft. It's about overcoming complex challenges. There are many other good examples for summer. There is also a very interesting campaign for holistic experiential learning called Experiential Learning at Home Campaign. This campaign is initiated by natural born leaders, lifelong home educators, experienced teacher trainers, and UK qualified assessors in children's care, learning, development, and play. This is a free four week online training program that mainly addresses all types of disruptions due to COVID-19 and all types of issues pertaining to children, parents, and schools. It emphasizes and puts into practice experiential learning. It helps bring back trust and confidence in learning. When most preschools and primary stages struggled with losses due to the pandemic. And like I said, it's a free campaign. Make sure to check it out and share it with parents and schools at elhcampaign.naturalbornleaders.org. I will include the link in the description. Now, parents will also need more and more orientation about handling their emotional states as well. Now, we know that parents are truly burdened by several types of disruptions and insecurities. They need to be advised to stay positive and encouraged despite all the challenges. So keeping in mind that parents and children are already facing the challenges is very important and mainly the challenge of learning because this alone is confusing for children it adds pressure to parents who question their children attainment especially after a year and a half of online and hybrid learning for example through awareness sessions we can help parents handle few of the most prevalent emotions of anxiety and anger if parents notice certain negative feelings or actions advising them to check if their children's feelings or actions could be the result of frustration is highly recommended for example during last year frustration was noted to result from online learning mode especially with those who did not like such modes or who might have not felt at ease with the teacher who was not herself or himself at ease teaching also the child who might have felt pressured to attain high scores social emotional separation from friends and some dear people in the normal old manner that we all know like sitting together rapport sharing food and things hugging playing it was another hidden cause for frustration and even now after the release of 
most of the restrictions. Not all children are enjoying their summer vacation the way they used to, going out as usual, traveling as usual. So parents will need some orientation and mainly some kind of emotional regulation if we may say so. Addressing parents who easily vent anger on their children, even for study reasons or other issues that might emerge. Uh, there are some strategies for self-control. It can be provided through awareness sessions given to parents on a regular basis. Exercises such as count back, for example, when they can count back from 10 to 0 when the parent is angry, it can disrupt the anger wave. For example, breathing to five, when we know we let more oxygen goes into the brain and focusing on the process brings immediate dispersion of the tension itself. Or for example, gratitude minute exercise, when the parent will just recall or think about things he or she is grateful for. And this demands willpower, as a matter of fact, and redirection of the thinking from negative to the positive. And it's very challenging during an anger wave, but it is highly effective when mastered properly. Parents also may need reorientation when it comes to accepting their child's academic performance and particularly scores. Now, most of the report cards have been issued all around the world. Some parents may have reacted with unease and even criticized their children. That will not help in rectifying attainment and performance in the coming learning period. That's why, for example, during the upcoming parent-teacher conferences at the beginning of the year, when the effect of the parent criticism is clearly explained, this will be very helpful in setting the tone for the upcoming months. Mark Burton, a parenting expert, writes, and I quote, our bodies aren't wired to withstand overly frequent or intense stress. Over time, it affects not just you as a parent, but your children, end quote. Ending this series and this episode with an open-ended question for all of us to ponder. Most schools state in their vision, mission, and objective statements that parents are partners in education. To what extent are we embracing this partnership? Are we offering genuine, innovative, tangible, and continuous opportunities for this partnership to nurture all children? Mm -hmm.